This is the Logitech G915, and it's a bloody beautiful keyboard, right? Super low profile, LEDs that could light up a room, brushed aluminium, aircraft grade aluminium by the way. Their words, not mine. It's a really impressive gaming keyboard. It's just very expensive. So keeping that in mind, I'm gonna take you through the G915 and hopefully help you decide if that extra cost is actually worth it. It's a keyboard, so let's start with the main event, the keys. On here, you'll find all of your favorite keys, everything from A to Z. <laughs> Sorry. The body on this gets so low due to Logitech's new low profile GL keys, which basically allow them to squish all of the individual key bits you know and love into a mechanism that's actually half the height. I think they've absolutely nailed it here. Both typing and gaming on this thing is an absolute joy, and it didn't take me very long at all to get used to it after coming from a pretty high profile mechanical gaming keyboard. You can actually get the keyboard in three different switch styles, linear, tactile, and clicky. I've only been able to try the tactile version of this keyboard. If you're interested in the other two types of switches, I've left a couple of links in the description for you to check out. The tactile, while it does still make a pretty distinct click sound, um, is actually quite quiet when you're typing, so I really do appreciate that. Here's an example of how it sounds. These new GL keys and its very thin body contribute to having this keyboard look really cool when it's totally flat on the desk. Unfortunately, this kind of positioning wasn't for me and my delicate wrists. No matter though. It comes with two different feet to prop it up as well. One at four degrees and one at eight degrees. And both, like the board itself, have really solid silicon on the tip to prevent the board from sliding around the desk while you type or game. It's actually quite difficult to push this thing around the desk unless you really try. Of course, with high-end keyboards, there's always gonna be a few extra buttons. First up, you've got the macro keys down the left-hand side. You can use the Logitech G-Hub software to map up to 30 button presses to these macro keys, so they can pretty much do whatever you want. I'll show you more of G-Hub in a sec. Next, you've got this row of soft keys at the top, which let you switch between the profiles for your macros. This fourth button, I call it Mr. Button, lets you record key presses as macros, so you can assign them to the G keys without going into the software. A bit further to the right, and we have buttons that let you switch between light speed and Bluetooth wireless connectivity. That's actually my favorite feature of this keyboard, so I'll get to more on that in a bit. This one turns on game mode, which disables certain keys you don't like pressing during gaming, and this one toggles the lights through five different levels of brightness. The media controls above the numpad are also soft, and above those is the very nice feeling and very wide scroll wheel for your volume. I actually really appreciate the soft buttons on these. They're distinct enough that if you're trying to find them by feel, your fingers will find them quite naturally because they feel so different to the rest of the keys. I do have one minor nitpick, and this may just be for me, but I really do not like having macro keys down the left-hand side of the keyboard. I don't really look at the keyboard much when I'm gaming or working, so if I'm looking for the control key, my hand naturally just reaches for the furthest key on the keyboard. I press this G5 key many times while working on this keyboard, and if there were soft buttons, that wouldn't have been an issue. Genius solution though, I just made the G5 key a macro for, you guessed it, the control key. Genius. Talking about setting macros, let's talk about the software. Oh, would you look at that? A stream cam is connected to my computer as well. If you are looking for a webcam, this might actually be exactly what you're looking for. I made a video on it just last week, so go check that out if you're in the mood for buying a new webcam. All right, if we jump into the G915 menu, we're shown the first tab, which is, of course, the LED lighting. You can't go past a gaming keyboard without LED lighting. It's very important. This has heaps of options in here to change exactly what the keyboard looks like. So you can get pretty creative with this. Um, what's that, red? <laughs> um, but if you press it, oh, it goes blue, it's pretty fun. Um, yeah, if you've used gaming keyboards before, then you'll know exactly what to expect here. There's just a lot, a lot of stuff to play with. 
Logitech's got this thing called LightSync, which means you can actually choose some of these animations and presets and stick them across all of your Logitech gear so they all flash the same colors or, you know, all work in unison, which is pretty cool. If you feel like getting into some really cool patterns, you can actually go down here in the bottom left and look at some profiles that other people have uploaded and shared. Um, so if we click on G915, here are a bunch of different options. I am actually really partial to this pink blue smooth one by Mario Berlin, and that's actually been playing the whole time I've been reviewing this. Um, but yeah, it's very cool. Next up, if you're a streamer or a big gamer, or even someone who needs a lot of shortcuts for work, then this next part really takes this from being a cool keyboard to a really useful tool, and that's the macros. There are plenty of options to play with and program into your macro keys. Um, there's stuff that can open apps and do stuff within them. Uh, you can do keyboard shortcuts like Control C, Control V. You can even have entire sequences of commands that uh, play out in a row. If you click on actions, you can actually see there are integrations with certain gaming apps already. So if you're using OBS, for example, you can pretty much just map toggling scenes to your macros and you could control your entire stream through these five keys if you really wanted to. If we click below assignments, we've got options for game mode. That's pretty basic. It basically allows you to kill any of the keys on the keyboard by simply pressing this one button. It's probably not a feature anyone 100% needs, but I certainly started using it anyway because I had it. It is actually kind of nice to have a kill switch for your least favorite keys. Or, you know, if you're really challenging yourself, you could switch off all the vowels and try typing a story. Once upon a time. Oh. It does annoy me a little bit that you can't actually switch off the macro keys. Why? What if I don't want to use them? Delving one level deeper into the settings, we get to this page, which has a few little extra options such as inactivity lighting, low battery mode, and it even has a bunch of stats about the battery as well, which is really interesting. Wow, it really does have a good battery, doesn't it? 41 hours still, that's awesome. It even updates the battery time if I change settings such as the LED brightness. So if I turn this all the way down, it has 108 hours left at 50% or 213 hours max charge. That is wild. Even turning it back up, 41 hours, I'm totally happy with that because I've got, I've got my cable right here. One issue I originally had when I first started using this keyboard was when it wasn't connected to my computer and G-Hub, it was flashing these crazy colors. Yeah, it's just a little bit too bright and over the top for my tired gamer eyes. But it's here where you can fix that. Basically, you can load one effect onto the device. So when it's not talking to G-Hub, it still has one lighting effect that it'll play back at all times. Above that is onboard memory mode, which will allow you to switch between macro profiles without being connected to G-Hub as well. So that's the software, but how do you get this connected to your computers? It has three connection options. The headliner is Lightspeed Wireless, which is said to have a one millisecond response rate. So yeah, pretty imperceptible from a wide keyboard. Based on my gaming experience and typing out a lot of scripts over the last few weeks, yeah, I can confirm it's pretty much impossible to tell the difference between this and a wired keyboard. Except, you know, the wire. The second connection is Bluetooth. This seems to drain batteries a little bit more and it actually gives you reduced options when it comes to animating your LEDs. It also introduces a slight input lag, but if you're just typing or messaging friends, you're very unlikely to notice. It's probably only gonna be an issue if you're doing competitive gaming. The third connection, well, you can just straight up plug it in. Wait, is that? Micro USB. So close Logitech, so close to perfect. It's also how you charge the thing, by the way. But yeah, should have been USB-C. Once you've got all three of these connection options together, it's pretty wild how quickly you can switch between using this keyboard on different devices. Here I am on my Alienware laptop, which has the dongle plugged in. Press the Bluetooth button. Now I'm on my Mac. And if we take it one step further, I can plug it into my PC and type in here. I'm not entirely sure why you'd need to switch between typing on three different devices at once, but you know, the option's there. So, should you buy the Logitech G915? Well, it is expensive. It's actually Logitech's most expensive keyboard on their website at the moment, at 399 Australian dollars. 
If you're looking for it a bit cheaper, I have left some links in the description where it has been going for well under $300, um, at least at the time of posting this. So check the links in the description if you're actually thinking about buying this, you can get, yeah, over 25% off. I do understand why this is so expensive. It has pretty much everything you want out of a gaming keyboard, and it does all of those features really well. There's nothing to dislike here. Okay, one thing. Still, I absolutely love this keyboard. It has replaced my previous keyboard, which I did love, by the way. Sorry, Steel Series, But yeah, it's really hard to recommend this as a must-buy at that price point. Still, if you have the cash and you think it's low profile and battery and software and connection options are all actually gonna be of benefit to you, then go nuts. This is a great keyboard to pick up. For hardcore gamers and streamers alike, this is an excellent tool. And for me personally, I expect it's gonna be in my computing arsenal for quite a while.